Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It is Sean Jones Harris of Zarius Creations and I am here with another planner tutorial DIY using Canva and a laminator that I showed some time back. I'll leave a link up above using my new laminator. I got a request from a viewer who asked me how did I make this cover? And I honestly thought I did this video and I actually couldn't find it when someone else asked me a question about it. And so I'm gonna do the video now and I truly apologize for the delay in this video, but here we go. So we wanna see how I made it, stay tuned. All right, so I made this um, cover in Canva. If you're not familiar, it's canva.com. If you wanna do a free trial, I will leave a link down below where you can click on it and do a free trial. I actually have the paid version of Canva, but there's a lot that you can do in the non-paid version, but there's so much more that you can do in the paid version. What I'm actually going to create is a cover for this planner right here. It is approximately, I want to say, um, Five and, around five and a half by eight and a half and the cover is just a little bit bigger it is a pen and gear journal that I purchased from Walmart and I'm sure it was on sale I don't like the cover so I am going to change it first thing we want to do is our custom size now I've already measured you're going to go up here in the right hand corner click your custom size and the first thing we want to do is change it to inches because that is our measurement is in inches I am going to type the measurements that I gathered for this book and like I said it's almost five and a half but the reason why I am doing it just a little bit smaller is because we're going to laminate the cover and it's going to give me that extra it's going to round it off it's so it's not going to give me all the numbers that I want it's going to give me that extra um what do you want to call it edge that I need to go around it all right so it's a little bit less than five and a half and then we're just going to go ahead with the eight and a half and we'll just play with it so once you do that, it will give you to this screen where you can play around and you can begin to design. So we're going to do the stripes. So we're going to go over to your elements over here on your left hand side. Next to all those pictures, we're going to click on elements. And I started out with a colored square. It's in my recently used, but you may find it down here. And what I did was I just, I just picked the size whatever size I wanted and then I placed it placed the first one at the top I selected my color do I want to do just for the sake of the other let me just double check which one did I do that one is kind of dark Okay, so we'll do this one. So for the sake of the other copy, we'll just follow suit. So here is this one. The measurement is 0 0.8. I don't want to do a whole entire inch because that looks a little big. I mean, you can. You can do your, your stripe, whatever size you want. This one... I'm sorry, is the width is 5.4 and the height is 0 0.9 if you want to do my exact. So I did the one and then I'm going to duplicate it over here on the right hand side next to the trash can where you see the two pages. Click that button, it duplicates and I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom. And I just want to make sure it's right at the bottom. Yes. And so here I'm going to click on the top again only because I am going to make a few more duplicates. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what let's see what these look like. And for right now, I'm going to place it. If you have a good eye, you probably can do this um, without any help. I don't have a good eye. I'm going to delete this one. 
so how many do I have all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so right now I have six. And then what I'm going to do, it, my cursor is going up to the top and I'm gonna select this whole entire slide. Select this slide, I'm gonna to go to positions up here on the right hand side. Oh, sorry, you cannot see. I we're gonna to go to positions, click position, click tidy up, and then it just made the project even. It made all the bars even from the top to the bottom. Let's see, how many did I do on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I may have made this smaller. So let's, all right, let's grab this one. All right, so I have the element, I have this one. I am going to actually make it smaller. And again, you can pick whatever measurement you want. This looks to be about 0 0.8. So I will duplicate it over here on the right hand side is a duplicate button. I am going to bring it down to the bottom. Then I'm just going to make a couple more duplicates. So I have to let's just do five more. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to place them wherever. I just want to get them in onto my canvas. Okay, bam. And as you can see, it is it's not even. They're, as far as the white spaces, they're not even. So I am going to select the whole entire project by right clicking my mouse and coming over the whole entire canvas that will select it all. Then over here on my right hand side, I'm going to click position. I'm going to click tidy up. And now it has evenly spaced my stripes. First thing I'm going to do is over here, there is a lock. I want to lock this down. That way I can't mess this up by clicking and trying to move, which I have done 50, 11 times. I can't tell you how many times I had to figure that out that there was a lock over there. And so one thing I want to do, first thing I want to do is let's grab the, let's grab the girl boss. So in my uploads, you grab whatever you want, but I am going to pull in the girl boss. Here we go. And this is an SVG that I I'm, I can't even tell you where I grabbed it from. I think this is these. Ugh. I think this is one of the graphics that I grabbed before I even know what SGVs were, what they were for, how they work, how you're supposed to use them, not use them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I just had it hanging in the wings. So I love that print. I don't know the fonts. I'm not good with fonts. Sorry. So let's grab a doll. And I have over in my folders, I don't, I don't know if I have that doll in. And this is an FOS doll, which is Feathers of Style over on Etsy. Let's see what the white one looks like. Uh, I think that the gray one that I had looks exceptionally well. But the thing is, searching for it. I have so many graphics that, I don't know, I was out of control. I probably should have had a class before I started buying graphics. So what I'm going to do, guys, is put you on pause. And I am going to search through my uploads. And I am going to find 
that graphic so we can get started. All right, guys, so I found the doll and I also found the light. <laughs> I definitely forgot to turn on the light and nobody told me. So I apologize. I'm going to check out the video and hopefully it looks bright enough. Let's see. Let's go back. Okay, I did the one with the brown hair. So I'll do, will I do her again? Sure, why not? Oh, before I do her, you know what else I want to do? I want to, I'm going to delete it, but I want to lock this girl boss in with the whole background. Again, because I don't want it to move. So now I'll put the doll back up and pull her out to size. Okay. So the way you get which, what I, I guess I call a shadow is there's numerous things that you can actually do. First of all, what we want to do is duplicate home girl all right so now I'm gonna show you why so now we'll hit edit image and we will go down to all of our we're gonna play with some of these buttons here the contrast the saturation the brightness So I completely turned her and there's some other things in here as well. And then there's a button over here that says see all. So that's next to the adjust. So we're, I'm playing around with how I want my doll to look. That one is a little a blur and that might be the one. Let's see. Let's go for shadows. This one is a shadow. I'm going to go over here to position because what I need to do is actually put her to the back. Not all the way to the back. Bring her forward some. How does she go? All the way to the back. All right. Let me see. Let me click off of everything and then let's, which one is moving? Okay, this one. <laughs> All right, I think that's kind of it, even though I wasn't. All right, so she's a little lighter in the back. So let's see how we can play with her. And if that's, if that's how you want it to look, that's fine. You definitely just want to keep playing until you get exactly how you want your girl to look or your guy, whichever one. And you're just going to play and play and play until you get the shadow that you actually want. Let's see. Oh, I went too far over. And then you just move, just move her around. Let's see, let's go back. Honestly, guys, I did this so long ago. I honestly don't remember. But this is looking like the closest. Oh, definitely didn't want her to be that bright. Didn't want her to be that bright at all. I actually wanted the one behind her. And now we get to play somewhere. Oh, 
Okay, I actually think I like that one. And you just even, like, even them to the same size is a little key. I got a little trigger finger because it keeps moving. <laughs> it keeps moving Um, even when I, I feel like I will let it go. But that's just my computer. I feel like I'm barely moving. Okay, there we go. All right, and then you have your your shadow and you have your planner cover. This is what me and this finger. I'm just going to lock it back. Excuse the noise. I was trying to do this video before the boys got in. All right, then I'm just going to, I'm actually going to duplicate this because I need the, I need a back for my thing. So on the back, I do not want any pictures or um, words. Oh, I got to unlock each and everything. Sorry, guys. So each and everything you want to, I just said that. Each and everything you want to unlock. All right. And then I am just going to add my logo. So did I lock? I did lock this. Um, my neighbors are coming home. Sorry, guys. I think I want her to be a little bit bigger. Because she's boss, she's big. Right? Oh, it's locked. That's the only thing about the lock is that you have to remember, one, that you locked it. And then when you want to adjust and um, move things around. You have to remember to unlock it. All right, let's see. Is that good enough? And then you're just playing and eyeballing. I'm going to make this just a tad bit bigger. Just so I can see it a little better. But however way you want your shadow is how you're going to play with it. I just want mine to be a little bit. Um, I don't want a deep shadow. Okay. Alright, so that's good for me right there. Again, I'm going to lock everything in. Come back down. This is my back. I am going to add my logo back here. And I am going to plop one of my logos on. And this is just for me to do the cover of my book. And then I will, there we go, put that in the middle. I am going to print it out. And I'm going to laminate it. So I'm going to hit this download button. And I'm actually going to print it out as a PDF. And I'm only going to print out page one and two on the PDF. Download. And then I'll print it out, laminate it. And then I'll take my planner cover apart. And here is the printed copy. You may have to do this a few times to make sure that it matches up correctly from top to bottom i just have a little overage and so you may want to start printing out in black and white as you can see i printed all this out in color and i wasted a lot of paper but in the end i finally got what i needed and now i am going to use my we are memory keepers paper trimmer and cut it down to size so that i can laminate it at the correct size and then cut the laminate down to size
All right, so here I have my laminated covers. I did cut them down just a little bit because I want to measure it up against the original cover. So that is my extra piece of laminate right there to show you guys that I already cut it. It was an eight and a half by 11. And so now I just want to measure it up against the original cover so I can see how much more I need to cut off. So don't immediately cut all the way to the end because you don't know how much more you need. So measure twice, maybe measure three or four times and then cut once. And so now that it is all cut down, I am going to get my corner rounder and then we are going to chop the ends. This corner rounder comes from We Are Memory Keepers, which is one of my favorite tools. It just takes the sharpness away from the edge so that you don't stick yourself or cut yourself or somebody else for that matter. And so it only takes a few seconds to trim off the ends. And then from there, we can punch our holes. All right, guys, so I am pulling out the cinch. This is the We Are Memory Keepers. Again, another We Are Memory Keepers Heidi Swap cinch. I actually have a video on the unboxing. And so before you start, you want to definitely unlock it so that you can move things around. And then you want to make sure that the inside is clean, of course, so that you'll get a clean cut. You want to make sure all of your knobs are pushed in so that you will get your holes placed in the right spot. Then once again, you measure up your original size or your template, whatever that you have, and then you can proceed to cut. I did say cut, but I meant punch. And we're gonna check the size. It is about eight and a half. So when we go to do our second one, we're gonna push in the number five, and then we will do the second part. So to begin, we push everything in, have it flush against the back, and then we can lower our handle. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see. And I'm actually using my old um, cover because I think that's just a great way to test it out. All right, so here I was trying not to get my arm in the way, but unfortunately that didn't work. So it punched the first 12 and it does look like it is even on the other side with the right hand side of the cover. So it looks like this is the right size, the perfect size. Now I'm gonna pull out the number five peg and the rest of them behind it, just so that there won't be any accidents. And then I will place it into the lock and then press it down so it can do the rest of the holes. And with the lock, you wanna make sure you're pushing it into the second hole from the top. That just seems to get the better, the better um, placement. I don't know why they chose that one but that's the one that they chose and it always seems to work and then you have to lift that little notch up and then voila we have our cover it looks like the sizing is correct and so from here we can actually go and do our actual cover
So first you just want to run it through a couple times. Make sure that there's nothing stuck in the blades back there. And then just like we did the first time, all your pegs are out and you pull it down. And then to do the top part portion in half, you want to pull out that number five peg. Now here sometimes it doesn't always go through and what I just do is twist off the back. You can use scissors if you want, but I just like twisting the um, cover to get them off. The scissors will get just as close. And now we are going to punch holes in the top of our cover. So we're gonna pull out that number five peg and I just like to do them all just so that there's no mishaps. We are going to place that second hole into the notch and make sure that it is locked so that it does not jump out of the way. You'll push it down and then you'll push the handle down and you should be at the same number of holes that we were at previously and it should be nice and even. And now we'll get the back cover done. All right, now that the cover is done, we can get ready for adding our wire to the project. So the holes match up, which is great. Doesn't always work that way, so don't be frustrated and um, don't feel intimidated. I've heard a lot of people say they were intimidated. Just keep trying, just make sure you buy ample paper and laminate so that um, you can just keep trying until you get it perfect. It will come. And I went and grabbed my wire from We Are Memory Keeper. You can purchase this at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. And here is the packaging for it. It doesn't give you any instructions on there, but it does show you some examples of how you can actually use the wire. All right, and then you just place your wire on the side like this, like so. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. And then, um, oh, I forgot to show you guys the sizing of the wire. Let me grab the box so that I can show you. I'm not sure if they have different sizes at Hobby Lobby or not, but you can order online from different places. And I'll leave a link in the description bar down below in case if you want to order different size wiring. All right, so here is the size. It is the 0 0.625 that we're using. And there are some cheat sheets out there online that'll tell you exactly how many pages you can use, which is what I was looking for. It's not on the box, so we're just gonna go with what we have. Now I am, again, using paper that was already punched that I purchased from a Christmas, um, Christmas themed notebook. So I didn't have to print out anything or punch holes in the papers. I'm adding my top cover and then I'm gonna add my back cover and this is what works in order to get your cover placement correct and as you can see I'm putting it on with the full wire I did not cut mine but I'm using some wire cutters from my jewelry kit it works really well you can buy um, wire cutters if you like but I just use the ones for my jewelry I don't make that much jewelry and you just want to make sure that you don't cut where the hoop is but after the hoop I'm going to cut that one. And be neat about your cut, guys, because even the piece that you cut off is very valuable. You have that little piece that you can make a little notepad. If you have the mini cinch, that'll be perfect for small notepads that you may make for your kids or even for adults. Then we turned our cinch around where we are going to clamp down our, um, our wire. And again, I'm looking at the size, the 0 0.625. And um, I'm going to show you guys which one I actually put it on because that measurement is not on the back. And that knob up there, it's hard to turn. So you have to push and turn the knob. 
and um, need a little elbow grease. And it could be just the way I'm sitting at my desk. I'm normally at my craft table, but I opted to sit at my desk and so that limits me. All right, so here's the numbers that are on the back. And um, so you can see where I actually put it. I actually like to put it in the middle of whatever is a designated wire so I can ensure that it actually closes. I know they have their numbers, but I just like to go a notch up. And with the wires, I heard from Miss Heidi Swap herself, you want to make sure that both the top and the bottom wires are flush against the backboard. If that is very, very, very important and pertinent to making sure that you get the roundness of the wires when you are done so that um, your project looks nice and neat. And that's it. You just pull the handle down and it closes. And now my notebook is done. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your questions down below in the um, comment section. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button so that you'll be the first to know when there's a new video posted to this channel. You get to know right away. Don't forget to follow me on all social media at Zarya's Creations here on YouTube, Instagram, as well as Facebook. Thanks for watching. See ya.